So good afternoon, everyone. My name is Kiana Walton, and I'm with the Maryland Insurance Administration. Welcome to today's Lunch with Mia, tips to set yourself up for financial success in 2024 and beyond. For today's event, we have the Maryland Supplemental Retirement Plans, Maryland Insurance Administration, and the Cash Campaign of Maryland. They are all here today to help us learn some tips on how to save money. Now, this would be for you, whether you are looking to save money on auto or homeowner's insurance, maybe you're looking at ways to save money to prepare for retirement, or just looking for assistance to find public and private benefits, then you are in the right place and welcome today. So just some housekeeping rules. This event is being recorded. Please leave your phones and cameras on mute for this event. If you are not presenting, if you could keep your camera off, if you have questions for today's speakers, please use the chat box and make sure your questions are sent to everyone and not just the speaker or the host. And we will save the questions for the end. So let's get started with our first presenter from the Maryland Supplemental Retirement Plan. Well, thank you. Um, my name is Jeannie Sutton, and I am just one of several education specialists with the state agency, uh, which is Maryland, uh, um, huh, sorry, Maryland Supplemental Retirement Plans. And uh, we do administer the 401k plans, 457b plans, and for those folks in the universities, the 403b plans. So um, please be reminded that we do not give legal uh, advice or investment advice or tax advice, um, but we are here to educate and um, talk to you and let you learn about how much is enough for your retirement. So um, with that, just want to get started. You know, um, socking away money for retirement is a great idea, but you have to uh, ask yourself, you know, how much will you really need? And so before knowing how much you need, you really have to ask yourself, you know, how do you picture your retirement? So if you had unlimited financial uh, uh, ability, you know, the time and the money, what would you do? And so do you have a bucket list? And these are things that you want to think about and you want to think about it long before retiring. So we want to talk about some keys for building financial security. One thing you want to make sure you do is aim to replace about 80% of your pre-retirement income um, during retirement. And now that's a ballpark figure. Some may need more, some may need less, but advisors will say around 80%. So you want to keep that in mind. You want to plan for a long own retirement as well. Statistically speaking, most people have a retirement of at least 25 years. You may have more, you may have less. Also, you need to consider inflation. You know, we've gotten a good dose of that over the past several years. The cost of everything has gone up. That's inflation. So you need to invest wisely to protect yourself against inflation. And then, of course, control spending and expenses. And that's not just while you're saving for retirement, but that's also during retirement. Now, keep in mind that some expenses may increase. You know, now that you've retired, you'll have time to travel, maybe do uh, some entertaining and also get to those hobbies that you've been wanting to do. We get older in retirement, so you may have more cost in medical and dental, and you may need to consider long-term care. So that would be an, an expense. Also, you do like to spoil the kids and the grandkids. You want to build that into the budgeting. And then if you do plan to relocate, you've got to think about that as well. Now, some expenses may decrease, such as commuting expenses. You're no longer going in and out of work uh, on a daily basis. Also, if you're currently contributing to your 401k uh, plans or uh, for those with a, working with municipalities, a 457, and those for in nonprofits, a 403b, if you're currently saving for that, once you leave your employer, you cannot uh, continue to contribute um, because contributions uh, by the IRS rules can only be made through payroll deduction. Uh, 
And then also you won't be paying into FICA anymore. That's that Social Security and uh, Medicare uh, taxes. Uh, and also, uh, you may not be spending so much on clothing or lunches out, and you may also find that you don't have a mortgage anymore. So you want to factor all of these things in your planning for retirement. Um, next, please. So we want to take a look at the possible sources of income during retirement. You know, um, for many folks, Social Security may be their only source of income in retirement. And if Social Security is your only source of income, there's going to be a gap. There's going to be a gap in what you're making versus what you will be receiving in Social Security because Social Security is designed to only replace about 40% of your current income. Um, so you got to keep that in mind. And also, um, when you're paying into Social Security and those FICA taxes, you're paying into Medicare, but Medicare premiums uh, will be deducted from your Social Security benefits as well. So again, you need to plan for that. Plan for that. Also, uh, will you be receiving a pension of some sort? Have you been saving in your 401k or your employer uh, retirement plans? There is a difference between a pension and a 401k and a 457 or 403b. Do you have traditional or Roth IRAs? Uh, do you have other investments that you've been saving on the side? And then a part-time job. You know, you may continue to work part-time even in retirement, but you're hoping that that choice is because you want to work to stay busy, to stay active. Um, you know, the goal is to get you to the point where you're working because you want to, not because you have to. But you have to give some consideration to where all your sources of income will be coming from. Now, next, please. You know, as I mentioned, Social Security may be the only source of income for many people. So um, you need to understand what your benefit is going to look like. So I encourage everyone to log on to my Social Security, uh, the socialsecurity.gov slash my account. Um, you can even just go to ssa.gov. Uh, head over there. If you have not created uh, your username and your password, I highly encourage that um, because not only will you know what your benefits are, but you can protect your identity and social security uh, to make sure that no one else will get your benefits. So uh, you've got to protect that. So uh, I encourage you to go to ssa.gov. And now it's important that you understand, um, you know, that you need 40 credits throughout your working life in order to even receive a social security benefit. And for most of us uh, that are working, we will qualify for that. But you earn 40 credits. The most you can earn in one year is four credits. So basically, it means that you have to work and pay into the system for at least 10 years to get a benefit. All right. But your benefit age, and if you don't, if you're not familiar with what your uh, full retirement age, specifically for our Social Security benefits, we have a chart here. Um, anybody born 1960 and later, it's going to be age 67. Prior to that, it's going to be age 66 and possibly some months. So again, know what your full retirement benefit amount is. It's also important to review the information and make sure that the details are accurate when you log on to your account because your Social Security retirement benefit is based on your 35 highest years of earnings. So uh, these do not need to be consecutive years, um, but the longer you work, the more your benefit will be because your lower earning years will drop off. So again, that's important to understand that your benefit is based on your 35 highest years of earnings. Uh, next, please. Now, I hope you noted your full retirement age from, from the previous slide, but did you know that you could start receiving benefits as early as age 62, assuming that you do have all 40 credits in? However, um, you will not receive your full benefit amount until you reach your full retirement age. So 
these are some numbers that you need to know. Assuming that you uh, are eligible for your benefit, you qualify, then age 62 is the earliest age in which to begin receiving your social security benefits. However, those benefits will be reduced. Now, if we look at the chart, we can see that an age, uh, we're assuming that this, uh, in this illustration, that this person's full retirement age is age 67. If this person started taking their benefit at age 62, the amount would be 1,196. And again, this is for illustration purposes only, but you need to understand that once that benefit amount is reduced, it's always reduced. If that person waited uh, until age 67, their full retirement age, then their benefit amount would be almost $600 more each month. And then at age 70, if you wait, until age 70, you will be getting a maximum Social Security benefit. And in this illustration, it's $2,251. So it is important to know when your full benefit age is, and it is an important decision to make uh, when you decide when to take that benefit amount. Okay, uh, next please. So as we said, you know, social security may not be enough. So that is why you have got to save. And, you know, there are several ways to consider in saving for retirement. Now here um, are the most common types of, of accounts that are used. Now, keep in mind, there are employer plans and then there are individual plans. With an employer plan, you may, uh, through your employer, uh, save for retirement in possibly a 401k or uh, a 403b or what is known as a 457. Just so you know, a 401k is for uh, employers that are, um, they are the private sector. A 403b is for uh, hospitals, churches, is nonprofit organizations, and a 457B is uh, specifically for municipality em uh, employees. So these plans are only open through an employer. Uh, some of these employers may match. They may match your contribution. So if you are working with an employer that offers these plans and they do match, then you want to make sure that you are contributing enough uh, to get uh, all of that match. Investments are often limited um, because it is the employer that is selecting those investments that you would be able to uh, participate in. And um, it generally allows for traditional and Roth options. And we'll talk about that more in a minute. Then for those of you that uh, maybe you work for employers that don't have a plan of any type, you wanna make sure that you uh, consider an IRA, an individual retirement account, is not. it is not associated with any employer plan. It can be opened by anyone with an earned income. Um, however, if you have a spouse and the spouse is not working, you can have what is called a spousal IRA if you are filing jointly. Um, it does have a tax deduction income limit. So that means that if you make over an, a certain amount, then your contribution into an IRA may not be completely tax deductible. You decide the investment. So there are a, ver a variety of investments. And again, you can uh, choose between traditional and Roth options, and you can have both. But I'll talk about traditional and Roth in a second. Now, uh, just please be aware that in 2024, you can save more because contribution limits did increase. Now, with IRAs, uh, the maximum contribution under age 50 is $7,000 per year. Age 50 and older, you can save up to $8,000 per year. Now, employer plans, Employer plans allow you to save even more. So if you are not participating in an employer plan, make sure that you do ask your employer about that. Um, employer plans under age 50, you can save up to $23,000 per year. And age 50 and older, you can actually save up to $30,500 each year. 
So uh, the government is very generous with these contribution amounts, and that is because they are serious about having people save um, for their retirement. Uh, next, please. Okay, so let's talk about that traditional and Roth, okay, because it can be important to you because you're deciding really when you want to pay taxes. And I'm, you know, ultimately their taxes have to be paid, um, but you can cut down on paying those taxes and you can decide when you pay them. You can decide that by which type of investment option you choose, whether it is pre tax, which is also known as traditional. And with a pre-tax, you're saying, you know what? Tax me later. I want a tax deduction now. So you make contributions without paying any taxes on those dollars that you've earned. It grows without you paying taxes. And then when you go to take a withdrawal of those dollars, that is when you would be taxed in the year that you take that distribution. So you may want to choose the traditional option if you have a, a shorter time horizon to retirement, especially if you feel that you're in a higher tax bracket now, and you may expect to be in a lower tax bracket when you're taking the dollars out of these plans. Um, and also maybe use the traditional if you need a tax break today, because again, you're making contributions based on dollars that you've earned. And if you make a pre-tax contribution, then you're not paying any taxes on those dollars that you were saving. After tax, on the other hand, that's where you're saying, tax me now. And you wanna consider that if you have a long time horizon. So any contributions that you make into that plan, you would be taxed now on those contributions, it would grow without you paying taxes. And then as long as you follow certain requirements with the Roth, then all of the earnings that have accumulated will come out of the account tax-free. So what are those rules? Well, for Roth, you have to make sure that the account is opened for at least five years before you take any distributions. The other rule is, is that you cannot make distributions until age 59 and a half. So if you've met those requirements, then all of the earnings that have uh, accumulated, you will not have to pay taxes on those earnings. So if you expect to be in a higher tax bracket in retirement, then maybe the Roth option is for you. And then also, with the Roth option, you can pass on these non-taxable assets to beneficiaries. And then also it's a great way if you have traditional and Roth to diversify your taxability um, when it comes to uh, your retirement income. Next, please. Okay, now this is one of my favorite charts because it actually says quite a bit. You know, how can you change your future? You really have to take action today because time truly is money. Um, and our illustration here is taking a monthly investment of $100. So let's assume someone's starting at age 25. They contribute $100 monthly through age 65. That's $48,000 out of their own pocket. Now, given different rates of return, 4%, 7%, 9%. And it's not unlikely uh, to get a 9%, you know, it's not unheard of to get a 9% average annual rate of return for that 25-year-old over a 40-year time span. But they could have over $470,000. If they waited just five years and start saving at 30,000, uh, sorry, at age 30, contribute $100 through age 65, that's $42,000 out of their pocket, $6,000 less. But at the other end, uh, assuming a 9% average annual rate of return, uh, they haven't uh, had a $300,000 accumulation. So that's a $170,000 difference. So that's why time is so important. Save as soon as you can. And then the other reason I like this, this also illustrates the difference between traditional and pre-tax. If that 25-year-old starts saving $100 a month, 
Is it best to pay taxes on 48,000 or 471,000? That's the difference. With a traditional, you're not paying taxes on the contributions that go in. Instead, you're paying on everything that is accumulated. With Roth, you're paying taxes on that contribution that goes in. Assuming you follow the rules of five years and age 59 and a half, then all the accumulated earnings will come out tax-free. Again, so like that chart. Okay, next, please. So to kind of wrap it up, we can't give you a, a particular number. There is no one size fits all. Uh, everyone's situation is different, but these are considerations that you have to think about. You know, when you are asking, are you saving enough for retirement? You know, what kind of retirement do you want to have? You know, will you be uh, at home doing those hobbies or will you be out and about traveling? You know, what will your income sources be in retirement? And do you know uh, when you might want to take your Social Security benefit? Because remember, your full retirement age, that's when you get your 100% benefit. Anything sooner, uh, you will have a reduction in your benefit amount. Can you take advantage of additional opportunities to save, whether it's through your employer plan or IRAs? And then always consider taxes. You know, you want to try and keep as much in your pocket as you can, but consider taxes now and in retirement. So please start saving now for the retirement that you want. And that concludes my presentation. Thank you. So next we will have the Maryland Insurance Administration. Good afternoon. My name is Mary Jo Rogers and I am with the Maryland Insurance Administration. And I'm gonna go over a little bit of information regarding homeowners and auto insurance. Next slide, please. The Maryland Insurance Administration is the state agency that regulates insurance in Maryland. The Maryland Insurance Administration licenses insurers and insurance producers, that's agents or brokers. We examine the business practices of licensees to ensure compliance with the law. We monitor solvency of insurers, review and approve insurance policy forms, review insurance rates to ensure rates are not inadequate, excessive, or unfairly discriminatory. And we investigate consumer and provider complaints and allegations of fraud. Let's start with automobile insurance coverage. Auto insurance coverage may include several types of protection options. However, Maryland state law requires all registered vehicle owners to purchase certain minimum protections and coverage levels. Next slide. The mandatory coverages and their limits. Maryland law requires all registered vehicle owners to carry a minimum amount of liability coverage. The, re the coverage required by law is $30,000 for bodily injury per person, $60,000 bodily injury per accident, and $15,000 property damage. So what is automobile liability insurance. Liability insurance protects the policyholder and other insureds when the policyholder or a legal driver they have allowed to drive their vehicle causes an accident. There are two types of liability coverage. The first is bodily injury liability coverage. It protects you if the driver of your car causes an accident and an injured person makes a claim or files a lawsuit against you unless the driver of your car is excluded or does not have a reasonable belief they are entitled to drive your car. Property damage liability protects you if the driver of your car 
causes an accident resulting in damage to someone else's property, like another vehicle or other property, such as a fence, unless the driver of your car, again, is excluded or does not have a reasonable belief they are entitled to drive your vehicle. Uninsured motorist UM coverage. That is the coverage that protects you and other insureds under your policy's terms when an accident is caused by a driver who does not have automobile insurance coverage, does not have enough liability insurance, or when the owner of the at-fault vehicle cannot be identified, as in the case of a hit and run. Maryland law requires all registered vehicle owners to carry a minimum amount of UM, uninsured motorists. The coverage required by law is $30,000 for bodily injury per person, $60,000 bodily injury per accident, and $15,000 property damage. Now, there are some optional coverages. First, we'll talk about collision coverage. That's an optional coverage that you purchase to, pro to provide for payment of property damage to your insured vehicle from a collision with another vehicle or an object. If you are in an accident and have collision coverage, your insurer will pay to repair your vehicle or, or will pay you what your vehicle was worth right before the accident occurred if your vehicle is deemed a total loss. Comprehensive coverage pays for damage to your car resulting from causes other than collision, like vandalism, theft, or storm damage. A list of all the optional coverages is available in our Consumer Guide to Auto Insurance, and you can find that at our website, which is www.insurance. Dot Maryland dot gov. Let's talk a little bit about declarations page. The declaration page is an overview of your insurance policy that your insurer will give you every time your policy renews. It is important to remember that this is not your insurance policy it is only a summary, summary of the coverages. The declarations page will include the name of the insurer, the name of the policy holder or holders, and the date of the new policy period. The declaration page will list all the vehicles covered by the policy and what coverages apply to each vehicle. It will also list any lien holders. It is very important that you review the declaration page as soon as you get it to be sure that the information for each insured vehicle is accurate and that you know what your policy will cover. If you see any incorrect or missing information, you should contact your insurance producer or insurer immediately. So how are automobile insurance rates determined? There is a wide variety of criteria considered to help the insurer in predicting the likelihood that you will be in an accident or to file a claim. Those include age, sex, marital status, number of miles driven annually, driving record, credit history, purpose vehicle is being driven for, that's the usage of the vehicle, the information of where the vehicle is garaged, driving experience, and claims history. Your credit and insurance. Under Maryland law, insurers may not use your credit history to decide if they will insure you, cancel you, 
renew you or increase your premium. However, insurers may use your credit history when you apply for coverage to determine what rate you will be paying for your auto insurance. Not all insurers use credit history and you may obtain auto insurance through insurers that do not use credit. For those insurers that do use credit, they are required to tell you at the time you apply for the insurance that they will consider your credit history. So why do automobile insurance rates increase? First, it's something called a general rate increase. Sometimes the premiums collected by an insurer may not be enough to support the projected cost of claims. When this occurs, an insurer may file with the Maryland Insurance Administration a request for a general rate increase, which the MIA must approve. Policyholder rate increase is policyholders who receive tickets or involved in an accident may see a rate increase. So there's two types of rate increases. Next slide. So what can you do? First would be comparison shop. Comparison shop by looking to see if you can obtain those same coverages from another insurer at a lower cost. Make sure you compare policies that offer the same types of coverage with the same deductibles and coverage limits. Make sure the information you provide is accurate and that you provide the same information to each insurer you call and ask about the deductibles and when they might apply. Ask about what is covered and what is excluded. Do not buy an insurance policy based solely on its price. Consider the coverages, limits, customer service, including claim service before you buy. Ask friends and neighbors about their experience with different insurers. Ask your insurer where, whether there are discounts that might be a bit available to you, such as good driver discounts, multi-policy, multi-vehicle and protective device discounts. Not all insurers offer the same discounts. I want to go over a little bit on an introduction to our rate guide. Um, this brochure is available again at our website and the link is auto insurance, a comparison guide to rates. You can find that again on our website, www.insurance.maryland.gov. And this compares under sample scenarios, the rates of approximately 50 different insurance companies. And it also provides the telephone numbers and websites in the back of the rate guide. Um, if you would like us to send you a copy, you can call us at 1-800. 492-6116 to get a copy mailed to you. Um, we also have an interactive automobile insurance rate guide at our website. And the rates are updated twice a year, every February and August. And again, the insurance phone numbers and websites are available in the back of the book. Next slide. So let's talk about an introduction to our rate guide. The rates shown in the guide are total annual premiums for um, a number of insurers and do not um, provide a little bit, they do not provide exact rates, um, but they give you a way to compare apples to apples and give you a good starting base on where you, um, when you start your shopping. Next slide. So again, there are various scenarios. Um, they are not exact, but as you're going through the rate guide, 
Um, you can find the scenario that closest matches your personal situation. So again, you can compare apples to apples and have a starting point when you're shopping. Next slide. Once you've chosen the scenarios that closely matches your personal situation, you then can refer to the zip code closest to your home. And they are broken down by counties in Baltimore City. Um, and there are, um, in some cases, two, one or two different zip codes. Again, these are not gonna be exact quotes. So you would select the county or Baltimore City in which you reside and select the zip code um, that is closest to your home. Next slide. So again, as you can see, the differences in the rates can vary significantly between um, the insurance companies. Next slide. Now you can comparison shop for auto insurance for using our interactive guide. And again, here's the link and we can put that in the chat. But again, it's at our on our website at insurance.maryland.gov. To obtain a sample premium in your area, you will need to determine your scenario that most closely reflects your household makeup by answering five questions. You will enter your scenario in the sample auto insurance rates found at the end of the form along with your county. You will then see the sample premium for some insurance companies who offer auto insurance in Maryland. Next slide. So next we're gonna talk about homeowner's insurance. Homeowner's insurance can help you manage the financial risks of home ownership. Homeowner's insurance may help you recover financially following a covered loss to your dwelling, personal property, or other structures. May protect you financially if someone is hurt or their property is damaged because of something you did or something that happens on your property by providing liability coverage and or paying for medical payments. Next slide. Again, you will receive a declarations page. When you purchase a homeowner's insurance policy, renew your policy or make any changes to your policy, you will be given a declarations page. The declarations page is the part of your policy that is specific to you and provides important information about your policy limits for each type of coverage. Next slide. Understanding your deck page is important. The deck page will show the name of the insurer and the name of your insurance producer. Again, that's your agent or broker the insured's name and the address of the insured location. And it may also list your mortgage company if there is one as an additional insured. Again, it is important to be sure that all of the information listed on the declarations page is correct. The deck page will list any endorsements like water sewer backup coverage, ordinance and law coverage, mold coverage, and replacement cost coverage that may be included in the policy. The amount of the coverage limits will be listed as well. But to understand the terms of coverage for these additional protections and any others listed on the deck page, you would need to read the forms and endorsements provided with your policy. If you have let your insurance lapse or you are interested in shopping for a new policy, comparison shopping is the key to getting most of your insurance dollar. So shop around. You may be surprised at how much less you can pay with another company for the exact same coverage. But don't forget, 
you want an apples to apples comparison and make sure the quotes you get are for the same coverages. Next slide. So just as with the auto, the Maryland Insurance Administration has a homeowner's insurance rate guide and the brochure is available on our website or you can receive a copy by calling us at 1-800-492-6116 and insurance companies phone numbers and websites are available in the back of the book just as they are with the auto insurance rate guide. Next slide. Know the difference between ACV and RCV when you are shopping. ACV stands for actual cash value and is the cost to replace the damaged property with like kind or quality materials minus depreciation for age and use. Whereas RCV, replacement cost coverage, is the cost to replace the damaged property with like kind or quality at full cost without depreciation, less the amount of your deductible. Next slide. So let's talk a little bit about deductibles. Uh, you may have many options when choosing a deductible. If you choose a policy with a $500 deductible, there must be $500 of covered damage to your home or your personal property for each claim before you enti are entitled to collect any money from your insurer. Your insurer will deduct $500 from the total amount of covered damages. Now carrying a higher deductible will reduce your premium, but remember to choose a deductible that you will be able to afford to pay out of pocket if you have a claim. You can ask your insurer or insurance producer how much your premium will be reduced by increasing the amount of your deductible. Next slide. Some homeowners policies contain special percentage deductibles for losses caused by specific perils, such as wind, hurricane, or other storms. The insurer may automatically include these deductibles or make these deductibles available at the option of the policyholder. Always ask your insurer or insurance producer if your policy has a flat deductible or a percentage deductible. Percentage deductibles are based on your dwelling coverage limit, not the amount of your loss. For example, if your dwelling is insured for $100,000 and your policy has a 2% deductible for certain perils, your deductible would be $2,000. Next slide. Homeowners insurance companies use a calculator based on factors like the age of your home, square footage, and building materials to calculate the replacement cost of your home, but there are still things for you to consider. Your dwelling coverage limit should be sufficient to rebuild your home from the foundation up in the event of a total loss. How much liability coverage do you want? Consider your assets and talk to a financial advisor if you need to. Next slide. Consider paying your insurance premium by automatic deduction from your bank account. Some insurers offer a discount for this option and this can save potential disruptions if you choose to take a long trip, end up in the hospital for a period of time. And if you qualify for discounts like safety and security devices, multi-policy or other available discounts. Next slide. If you are planning on long vacations or you have a second home where you spend time, look for language in the policy about vacant or unoccupied property and talk to your insurance agent about your situation. 
Remember to read your policy and ask questions if you need to. It could save you a lot of heartache in the future. Next slide. If you have been turned down by one insurer for homeowner's insurance, try obtaining coverage through another insurer or other insurers. Do not assume that you will be turned down by all insurers. Just as insurers have different premiums, they also have different underwriting requirements. Call around and keep trying to obtain an insurance policy. Next slide. If you are unable to obtain insurance for your home from a private insurer, limited, ins limited insurance protection may be available through the Maryland Property Insurance Availability Program, known as Joint Insurance Association, JIA. And here is their contact information. It's 3290 North Ridge Road, Suite 210, Ellicott City, Maryland, 21043. Their phone number is 410-539-6808 or 1-800-492-5670. And their website is www.mdjia.org. Next slide. So let's sum up everything that we've covered regarding homeowner's insurance. First of all, comparison shopping is the key to getting the most out of your insurance dollar. Tips for getting the most out of insurance shopping. Make sure you provide the same information to each insurer or insurance producer. Ask about discounts. Ask about deductibles and when they apply. Ask about what is covered and what is excluded. In addition to price, consider factors such as cover coverage limits and customer service. And again, can always ask friends and neighbors about their experience with different insurers. Next slide. And here is our contact information. Uh, again, our 800 number, 1-800. 492-6116 or 410-468-2000. And again, our website is insurance.maryland.gov. And we encourage you to look, at, look us up on the various social media apps for additional tips and information. Thank you. Um, next, we have the Cash Campaign of Maryland and any um, of the comparison guides were put in the chat if anyone's interested. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hello, everyone. My name is Christina Figueroa. I'm a program associate with financial capability with the cash campaign. Next slide. For those of you who don't know the organization, Cash Campaign of Maryland, CASH is an acronym. It stands for Creating Assets, Savings, and Hope. And the work that we do is to promote economic advancement for low to moderate income individuals and families in Baltimore and across Maryland. Next slide. We offer a number of different services. So we have free tax preparation, which we'll talk about a little bit further, financial education workshops and conferences, benefit screenings, which will be the meat of this presentation, financial coaching and financial planning, financial fitness fairs, Maryland Cash Academy, where you can get more information, get additional resources, webinars, additional financial education. We also do advocacy and policy, and we have a banking program called Bank on Maryland. Next slide. Um, to learn more about us, you can go to our website, which is cashmd.org. I did want to point out that we have uh, one of our largest financial fitness fairs happening March 23rd from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. at Poly Western High School here in Baltimore. Um, <laughs> there will be a credit cafe. They can pull your credit report, talk you through everything that is on there. There are financial planners providing free financial planning services, a number of different workshops <laughs> on everything related from small businesses to homeownership to 
paying for college. Um, so especially on our topic today about financial wellness, we want to make sure that folks are aware and that you can participate if you're interested. Um, all of that is free. So again, Saturday, March 23rd from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Next slide. Before getting into earned benefits and the benefit screening services that we provide, I wanted to tell you all a little bit about our financial coaching. So we have a financial coaching program that is virtual, unlimited, and free through a partnership with Trust Plus. <coughs> In order to get connected, you can text Cash Coach to the number 646-349-5959. Or you can use um, the QR code here. Uh, they can really help you with eliminating debt, rebuilding credit, working on a spending plan, um, selecting financial products, and dealing with debt collectors. So this is something that can really help you in terms of moving your financial fitness forward. Next slide. Today, we're really going to focus on a benefits screening program. So the financial coaching a volunteer paid position. The financial coaching is through another nonprofit and they provide that service um, and they are paid coaches. Um, but for those who go through our program, you would be able to access the coaching for free. Um, so for the benefits screening, this was kind of the, the crux of our presentation today. We do Cash Campaign does benefit screening through a program called Earn Benefits Online, where we can help screen you or someone in your household for over 20 different public benefits and then assist with some applications. These benefits include utilities, <laughs> energy assistance, health, nutrition, and tax credits. Um, there is an intake form on our website. It takes about 10 minutes. Once you complete the intake form, then um, someone will get back to you and you will be able to start the process because there is a large number of folks coming through. You won't hear back immediately, but you will hear back within a short period of time. The screening is free and confidential. Um, and again, the starting point is to complete that intake form, which I have put into the chat. Um, and next, we'll kind of go through some of the different public benefits that we will be screening for. Next slide. So when it comes to eligibility, each program is going to have its own eligibility. So that's part of the benefit of doing this benefit screening is that we are looking at eligibility for a lot of different programs at the same time. Um, instead of you having to do the work of going to every single individual office to determine your eligibility. <laughs> when you are prepared to do the benefit screening, you will need to have a photo ID. Um, you'll need to have a birth certificate or other kind of proof of citizenship or qualified immigrant paperwork um, for those who are applying and who will be on any given applications, um, a social security card or social security number, um, proof of income. So that's going to be any kinds of award letters. So if you get Social Security Administration, anything like that, um, pay stubs, if you have a side gig, whatever income you have currently, household resources. So that would be bank statements, et cetera, and household expenses. So that could be your BGE bill. Um, that could be how much you're paying for rent or your mortgage, round rent, phone bill all of those kinds of things. So you'll wanna make sure to gather all of that documentation <laughs> so that the benefit screening can be effective um, and so that we can then try to help you with certain applications. Um, <coughs> in terms of the amount of time, excuse me, that it will take to get benefits, it depends on the agency. Generally speaking, we're talking around 30 days, but it can take longer or, or shorter, again, depending on the specific agency where we're applying, um, but that's general consensus is around that much time. Next slide. So we're going to go through some of these benefits now just to give you an idea of some of the different benefits that we will help be screening for um, and can help apply for. So one thing is a SNAP, formerly food stamps. So for those of you who aren't familiar, they provide <laughs> low to moderate income and low to no income individuals and families with money to buy food each month. <laughs> 
excuse me, you'll receive an EBT card where that money, uh, those monies will be placed so that you can purchase the food items. Um, eligibility, like we said, it's gonna be based on income, expenses, and household size. Um, there are employment requirements now for able-bodied adults. Uh, there are certain exceptions, but there are employment requirements. There are also special rules for households who have a member who's elderly, so age 60 and over or disabled. And those are things that we will discuss with you um, as we help you with that application if you're found to be eligible in your screening. Next slide. We also help with energy assistance. So these the specific programs are the Maryland Energy Assistance Program or MEEP, USP, <laughs> Electric Universal Service Program, and there's also a rearage fund. So as we go through the screening process, <laughs> we would be able to see which of these programs, if any, you might be eligible for, and then help you with that application. Next slide. There's also temporary cash assistance, TCA. Um, this offers low income families with dependent children. So children under the age of 18 um, funds, uh, additional funds. One thing to note is that anyone who is applying for this, who wants, who is interested in getting that, those funds will need to make sure that they are cooperating with child support. Um, if they're not, unfortunately, then they will not be eligible. <coughs> Like food stamps, money will go onto an EBT card. Um, the recipients often need to attend programs to help transition adults into the workforce. And individuals and married couples without dependent children are not eligible. So you need to have a dependent child and be within those income limits and participate with child support. Next. We also have um, help screen for and apply for temporary disability assistance or TDAP. So this offers temporary funds to qualified recipients to have a short-term disability or are waiting for long-term federal disability benefits such as SSI or SSDI. Eligibility is determined by um, having a, a doctor write doctor's notes and then also income. So this is something where you will have to make sure that you have all of the different income requirements. The benefits programs are offered um, for a period of 12 months, and disabilities can be physical and or mental. Next. Another program is WIC. For those who haven't heard of it, um, it helps provide low-income pregnant women with ch and children up to age five um, with additional free nutritious food, education programs, and breastfeeding support. Men are also eligible if they're a single parent or um, of a child fitting the above criteria. So that's important to note. Next slide. We also help people screen people for free and reduced price school lunches um, and meals. So that's something that we would help with. <coughs> Families who are already receiving SNAP, TCA, may be eligible for free meals. Um, in certain jurisdictions, uh, there is community eligibility, so everyone in the area would be eligible. Um, but this is something that we would help you with as we screen for folks um, across the state of Maryland. Next slide. Head Start is also something that we would help screen for. That's geared for children, um, towards children between the ages of zero to five, uh, early Head Start towards infants. Um, there isn't an online application for this, so we, so we would be directing you to locations that you would be able to contact directly, but you would at least have the screening to see if you might potentially be eligible. Next slide. The Child Care Subsidy is another program that helps provide funds, um, and this is for eligible parents with child care costs. Um, it is important to note that those enrolled in TCA or temporary cash assistance are given priority. Um, you do have to be income eligible, and the way that it works is that those who are eligible <coughs> are provided vouchers, um, and again, you must participate with child support enforcement. Next slide. Um, child support payment incentive. So this is something um, specifically to help non-custodial parents pay back child support owed to the state of Maryland. Next slide. Medical assistance, we would not be helping with that application, but we can help determine if you were eligible. 
um, you would be applying through the Maryland Health Department, Maryland Health Connection Health Department or local department of social services office, depending on your particular situation. Um, and then you would be able to choose an MCO, a managed care organization to provide those medical services. So what we would be doing, is not necessarily the application process, but just a benefit, just the screening to see if this is something you might be eligible for. Next slide. Um, we also screen for a number of different Medicare programs. Um, all of these are for those who are lower income. For some of these programs, you need to be working. For some of them, you don't. Um, so there's <coughs> specified low income Medicare beneficiary or SLMB. Um, this can potentially help pay for Medicare Part B premiums if you are lower income and are working. Um, Medicare Extra Help, which is federal. Um, this can pay for some of the costs for prescription drug, drug plan. Um, so we would be screening for that. Qualified Medicare Beneficiary or QMB. Uh, this helps individuals and families who are already receiving Medicare and meeting income and resource limits pay for out-of-pocket medical expenses. And it could potentially help pay for Medicare Part A and B. And then we have Qualified Individual or QI1. Um, if you receive Medicare, have income from working um, and are lower income. For this, it's first come, first serve, and you cannot also receive Medicaid. So the benefit here is that there can be some additional assistance in terms of what, what program, you know, if you are receiving Medicare, <coughs> excuse me, and you are lower income, we can help screen you to see which of these things you might be eligible for. Next slide. So here is there help for unemployed college students. Um, so there are some programs that you might be eligible for. Needy Meds Discount Card is one of them. Um, there is no eligibility requirements. Um, they can help you. It can really help with paying less money for health for um, medications, be they over the counter or prescription costs. If you don't have health insurance, or even if you have health health insurance, it can help with the um, over-the-counter medication. So this is something that we definitely recommend for everyone. Next. Telife, this is another thing that can be helpful for most folks. Um, if you are receiving Medicaid or SNAP, you're, you can automatically apply. Um, otherwise, they really look at your income and they can offer discounted cell phones, landline best telephone services for low-income residents. <laughs> There are, are a lot of different companies that are working with TelLife, and two of the common ones you may have heard of are Assurance Wireless and SafeLink. Next slide. Free tax preparation and tax credits. So Cash Campaign of Maryland has a free tax preparation program. And in the next slide, I'll explain a little bit more about eligibility. But during the benefit screening, we can screen you for that to see if you're eligible. Um, there are a couple of different tax credits that are screened for with Earned Benefits Online. One includes the Earned Income Tax Credit, um, and there is both a Maryland and a federal. Uh, but this is for this is a tax credit for low-income taxpayers, and the Child Tax Credit, <coughs> which allows eligible recipients to deduct child and dependent care um, costs on the tax and the tax return. Next slide. For our tax preparation, we recommend that you go to Be More Free Taxes and then that you can get more information and you can sign up, you can um, schedule yourself an appointment. Um, you need to be a Maryland resident, be a taxpayer that's earning $64,000 or less per year, and that's for the household. So if you're an individual or if you are a household, you have to be earning less than $64,000 a year. You can call 410-234-8008 or visit bemorefreetaxes.org. Next slide. There are certain property taxes that we screen for. So one is the renter's tax credit. And this offers a tax refund for qualified renters. It's based on the income and rent. Um, <coughs> 
We also have a homeowner's tax credit. So that's a tax discount for qualified homeowners in Maryland, um, which can help limit the property tax that's based on your income level. So these are things that we would be screening for. Next slide. Baltimore Housing Rehabilitation Program. They offer affordable rehabilitation loans to help address safety violations and major deficiencies. So that could be HVAC, furnace, boilers, water heaters on owner-occupied properties. So this also includes things like a roof repair, plumbing repair, um, disability accessibility, structural repairs, electrical repairs, but you do have to get screened for this to see if this is something that you might be eligible for, and then you would follow up with them to see how they might be able to assist you. Next slide. There's, we also do screening for um, the lead hazard control, Maryland lead hazard control program. So that's something that you might be interested in, especially if you live in an area with older homes. Um, and they can look into things like window replacement, door replacements, wall stabilization, and minimal structural repairs. Um, again, this is all going to be income eligible. Um, so that's part of this. This would be part of the screening to see if you might be eligible for that service. Next slide. Those are a number of the more popular benefits. Um, again, if you have any questions, uh, you can about the programs that we provide at Cash Campaign. You could go to cashmd.org. If you are interested in completing a benefit screening, so that we can get in touch with you um, and conduct that screening, um, you would want to fill out the intake form. So again, I encourage anyone who is interested to feel free to move forward by. Clicking on that, I will add it to the chat again so that everyone has that available to them. Um, but the benefits here are <coughs> potentially reducing costs, helping you make those ends meet as you're going forward. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you to all of our presenters, the Maryland Supplemental Retirement Plan, Maryland Insurance Administration, the Cash Campaign of Maryland, um, there was only one question that I saw in the chat, and it was for Mary Jo. It asks, does the MIA have the authority to deny or modify a general rate increase application from an insurer? Well, Maryland is what we call a file and use state, so there's no pre-approval of their rates. Um, the insurance companies are required to file their rates with us along with documentation to support those rates and any rate increases. Um, generally, we do not um, disapprove those rates. Uh, we can if they are excessive or discriminatory, but um, generally, no, we do not um, disapprove those rates if they can provide the um, actuarial data to support those rate increases. There are a few states that are pre-approval states and that the um, statistics show that that has no impact on rate increases. Generally in those states that have a pre-approval process, um, those rates are pretty much um, across the board approved. Um, so again, if an insurance company can provide the data to support the need for those increases, our goal at the Maryland Insurance Administration is to make sure that an insurance company is financially stable and able to pay the claims that are presented to them. Um, and so if they show that what they take in is less than what they're paying out in claims, um, the insurance company would quickly become insolvent and go bankrupt, and it would no longer be able to protect Maryland consumers. They had a loss, whether it's their home or auto. So our main interest is to make sure that they are collecting sufficient premium to keep them solvent and financially stable. Thank you, Mary Jo. So, so again, I just wanna thank all of our presenters. Um, just a note to let you know that we do have an upcoming event Wednesday, March 13th, and it will be our virtual open house 
where you will learn more about the Maryland Insurance Administration. And at that time, if you have any questions, concerns, you can have a private conversation with one of the MIA representatives. And it will be from 12 to 2 in the afternoon. And then there will be another one from 5 to 7. So again, Wednesday, March 13th will be our next event, which will be a virtual open house. You will find information on our website. Again, um, thank you for joining us today. We just have a brief survey that will be put in the chat. Um, if you could fill it out to help us um, so that we can better inform you with our webinars. And um, again, thank you from from the Maryland Insurance Administration to the Maryland Supplemental Retirement Plans and the Cash Campaign of Maryland. And thank you everyone for joining us this afternoon.